Hello and welcome to the Star of War Savage channel, and today I'll be playing Pistol Soldiers Days Bird. I'm using unlimited points because I'm going to do my own scenario on a map that I made myself a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. I'll be the attacker from the south, not playing as Confederates. You would need to buy one Zuaz with a rifle, three Zuaz with a musket. Eight volunteers of musket, one smooth bore, six cavalry, and I believe that is it. For the Union, they get one rifle battery, three cavalry, they also get ten infantry, I also need two rifle skirmishers. Make sure I have everything on here. Eight. There you go. Yep. Eight volunteers of a rifle. Two skirmishers of a rifle. Three cavalry. One rifle battery. That is all you will be needing. A, I might not put them in their right position because I haven't updated the map to do that yet. But I am now redoing some maps, so I might redo it when I have the time and the chance. Enough, they pretty much all the cavalry was over here. Now, the setup will be cavalry to uh, six units to the left, cannon since I didn't add extra spaces because across the river, and then you'd have your four zoops to the right and your eight zoops to the left in this square. That is what, how you deploy for this scenario. Usually, as a union, you'd have a skirmisher here and a skirmisher here. Put a cannon right here. Five volunteers with a rifle here. Three of the this these three spots was where you put the three Union cavalry. You put infantry here, two volunteers. And in one of these spaces, a volunteer. That is the normal setup for my scenario, the Battle Front Royal. Now let's Dude, on with this game, I should probably update the map. So I might come out with another video updating this map. For now, we're just on a roll with it. Also, that is a secondary objective. So is a uh, Richardson's Hill. The main objective is to take Dart Hill, though, and maybe Cedarville. Cedarville kind of gives you the major victory. Start taking up the Union Cavalry. Trap some of these units in. Probably should charge the volunteers, I will. Oh, ripped the Union Cavalry that spawned it for Royal. So yeah, you just, you just try to push forward as quick as you can. You're not able, you're not allowed in my scenario to fire your cannon until it gets across the river. Have the tower move up the road. Historically, the tower came into these two spots, then charged across this into a cornfield, and then charged into the enemy, which they had trenches and they had like a little defense position, that's why you have the farmhouse, that was the uh, station, that's called the town station back then. Now they're coming down to attach us. I've never seen the AI actually do that on my map. Surprising. What? I took casualties? That's, that's sad. I don't understand it, but alright. Come on, 
don't you have break these guys? Versus rifles at one range is not going to work out very well. I was doing pretty good damage to the uh, outnumbered Union. Because we all number them in this scenario. Aw, oh, dang it, I forgot one thing. When you do this scenario, it is recommended to do 100 man companies instead of battalions. More historical, you get more historically correct. How, wait, cavalry is just. Wait, I didn't know cavalry has a chance to disorder. Charge enemy, hold on back to skirmishers, the role of cavalry shot troops. Zoom machine is but it doesn't test the troops, it can still be effective. Well, that doesn't mean that skirmishers, actually, that's annoying. I never knew that. I mean, knew that. I've used cavalry for a while now. Alright, so, well, so usually you just come out over here and just try to take this position. You outnumber the Union in unit size 3 to 1, but it, the fences are a pain here. So, enjoy trying to take this position. The enemy sometimes does send reinforcements, so you probably won't have too good of a time. If they don't send reinforcements, I mean. And it's usually easier to take this, this tile with the trench instead of the ginormous farmhouse that has 60 defense. This cannon. Now, historically, the Union troops had a handful of skirmishers in the town, which is why there's two skirmishers here. They usually got pushed back by the Confederates. They made a stand on this hill. Richardson's Hill? Yeah, Richardson's Hill. And the Confederates made a line where the Union are to the creek. And they started trying to flank it. They beat them back. They ran, the Union ran across the hill. They burnt their tents. And they made their final stand on this hill. Which has no units, just AI doesn't put units up there. But when you're playing against a real person, which I do a lot on this map, it's, it's pretty interesting. I still don't understand how to do the AI part though, so until then, you you do have a map where no one no one retreats to the positions historically correct. Try to break these volunteers, no. Those volunteers are going to be captured. These guys are going to fall back. I'm going to fire the cannon. We got the trench, yep. Yeah. The cavalry. Skirt, we'll do him. Yep. And since was, I'm trying to be historically correct here, we're not going to take the side road, which is a historical position, but no one ever used during the battle. And the cavalry historically broke through here. Went along this road and actually came to the left flank and behind the Union defenders at the very last moment. Well, if you can break this position, you can do that. So if you're fast enough with the cavalry, or lucky enough, you can easily break the position. So the cavalry now attacking in that, in that brute force to try to break through that the station. Oh wait, they do have some troops on the hill guarding it. There's some skirmishers up there. Just gonna shoot these riding troops. And they've ran into the Shenandoah River, I believe the South Fork, yep. Yeah, and just died in the river. Now that we've secured from oil, we can now move forward with other things.
including train to take Dart Hill, which Dart Hill was a singular unit of skirmishers. I'll be firing the cavalry as a retreat, beating them up a little bit. of infantry up here using the musket close as the confederates at this time of the army of the valley had almost no rifles a handful of rifles that were given out were as far as I could do historically you know, looking at it was like some of the men from Wheat's battalion the company of them had it also this map is based off of my board game which I do have a board game, which I bring to my club sometimes at school. Yeah, this is probably where you take a lot of casualties. And if you're playing with a friend, you guys can agree not to use recover, which we usually do. I mean, more historically accurate, you can't just do troops out of thin air. It's more interesting. For a Union player, just in a huge head state offensive, just lose a lot of men. But it puts them in the mindset of being outnumbered with the Union at, uh, from Royal. I would want to take that hopefully next turn. Yeah, that's where Confederates take a lot of casualties, just like historically. In. They've routed into the North Fork of the Shannon River. I'm just trying to start weakening up this position by a lot. And I don't care, I'm just going to start charging. Oh, never mind. If I would do way more damage than that. Eh. 12 jewels for 30 men. That was not worth it. Not worth it at all. Come on, break the Union. Just about whittling down the Union at this point. Try to some close up the ways against the Union. A little long range involved. Historically, the Confederates did flank using this creek, but in this game, it kind of slows it down a little bit. Also, the Wheat's Battalion's a little mumble jumboed now. Just now, there's just units everywhere. There's no specific impound to the organization in most of them. Or in the unit that they, the volunteers were originally in, which is the least anti-tighter, I mean, Hayes Brigade. Which is smaller in steam than they were historically in the battle. I give them only 800 day of uh, uh, historical accounts, say about 1,200 or more. close and stir shooting. It's going to be taking heavy casualties. This casualties though. No big deal. It's losing double the amount of manpower close. I sometimes use it that. Which does a lot of damage. Now okay, well, I don't want to try to cross the river. I'm just going to blast them and keep them away. We 
just need to take some trenches and I want you to take uh, a little bit less of it. It's a 14. The Union is moving to defend George Hill, which is actually joining historically correct. Invitations of casualties. They're slowly starting to evacuate their troops to George Hill. I should fire my hand first. Historically, I believe they left behind their cannons, which they had two rifle cannons of 10 pounders historically at the battle. Starting to weaken them up. Cover this cavalry. Try to get some one range shots on them. Let's do a little bit of damage here and there. But yeah, the Bucktown defenders were very stunt defenders. I believe they actually had men from the second Wisconsin over there and some Indiana troops. Which were some pretty elite troops over there. Alright, I think we finally are able to cut off the retreats of these stupid volunteers strongly defending the only way to retreat for the Union. There we go. They've killed themselves into the river. Well, they've drowned themselves into the North Fork River. Just no one knows how to swim in this game. I start flanking with this unit so I can start getting the uh, the flank penalty and trap all these guys completely in. Which would be very nice. The last unit through the defense. Oh. Oh no, they're trying to escape. No. You might have ran down the hill, but you're not going to get away from my men. Now we have the high ground in the hill. Enjoy. Okay, my, my Zwabs are taking some damage. No, not my Zwabs. Also, this bridge right here was on fire in the historical battle. They charged across two hours on fire. Volunteers badge. Which I'm better just bring up a small battery of two to four guns of Napoleons or six pounders. So that's what represents the smooth bore in the battle. Yeah, I'm not getting lucky in the cover. Oh, they're retreating. Chase them down. Didn't attack on this turn. Actually, it might. This actually is pretty historical. We're just we just routed them from Richardson's Hill. We're back, we broke through Bucktown Station. I'll leave behind a small guard to guard Bucktown Station. We're going to head east to flank Dart Hill. There's a handful of troops actually defending everything. So, that's doing historically correct. Nice. That artillery is annoying. Last this uh, unit. A volunteers fire a volley at them. We're not going to want to, they have, uh, they have rifles. Took out their cannon. I'll have these wobs start moving out. These volunteers in because they recovered like 60 guys. Try to get these guys in the corner so that they, as soon as they retreat, they just die. 
which happens in this game sometimes. Alright, whoever's we just left behind. 211? Yeah, you're being left behind. Everyone else, move out. Keep chasing that unit, keep them away while the rest of the men are going to try to flank Dark Hill. We have five turns to do this. Uh -huh. No, we can the greatest. Oh no, my men are disordered. Thank God we won that for that combat. Yeah, there's not going to be much time to have a time for you. No disorder, please. Yeah, yeah, disorder. We can pop a little bit. Trap these guys once again to the deep recovering. Alright, Dave, Dave, now finally be chilled one second over there. Our rifle volley. Also, I am running a uh, server for soldiers where you actually do like a war game, but using Tridspiel rules and some other things, you can actually have. Oh, I should have bring up an atom. Where we are playing the Battle of Gaysburg, not historically correct, but everyone, both sides are having fun. I'm enjoying it as the Empire. Spectators are enjoying it. We have actually a good amount of spectators. If you are on the Jolly Pitch server and you want to watch, just let me know. Alright. Oh, we can't even charge the Stormshirts. Okay, well then. Just shoot them. But yeah, if you're interested in what, and if you to be a spectator, then just let me know. We have like 20-ish, 20 maybe less uh, spectators right now. I can't use this unit. We need a good unit. Alright, can you do the charge? Yes, you can. Oh, never mind, no you do not. No historical we charge across the burning bridge. Dang. Alright, just finish the job now. Let's try to cross them a little bit more. I'm even gonna charge them, I'm just gonna shoot them. There we go. Uh, oh, they have some skirmishers on the uh, Cedarville. Historically, guard fuel was pushed back, and the last stand of the Union, just the cavalry was chasing them, was at Cedarville. So, you can taste the real good job. Also, if you want this map and you're part of the Jolly Pixel server, then just let me know, I'll give it to you. It's also in the Tarts Hydra first page, I believe. Alright, let's take Guard Hill and win this battle, hopefully. Jowry's keep charging these, uh, these skirmishers. Also, I've been thinking of making some more, uh, some more Civil War units. I've already put some up in the sprites, and I'm thinking of making some stats for them to see if, if Crystal made them a unit or not. Put this unit up there. You guys can head up towards White Post, which I have not marked, but yeah, White Post is this building over here with the Ford. Got 
see Siege of Ruin, we've, we've won this battle. No, no problem. Two turns left, I think we can take it. So we're men's remains of the armies on to perform there. Charge. Oh well, you gotta charge him now. And then they retreat across White Post, across the Shenandoah River. Just to escape the horde of Confederates marching towards Cedarville. Kind of historically correct, because the cavalry that was in reserve, it was a New York cavalry unit, it was told to charge, but no, they actually turned around and hit their own men, knocking them all over. And then the Confederate cavalry came in and just mopped up whatever remained of the Union forces after that. So yeah, the, the Union cavalry didn't really help out the, the Union in the end. Okay. It's time to get it worse. Two more turns, we have all the positions. Seems like they're just gonna start scattering. Looks like it's gonna be a uh, Johnny Rare victory. Let's do a tower dude over here. My mini brigade wants to say hello. You've checked yourself. Next to the Shandra River. I don't know how to finish off these guys. And my, my army is just making a little mini parade out of this, marching down this road. So yeah, this is the map that I made. I am trying out my second map that I have for my board game, and I'm almost done making it. This is how I finished with the AI stuff, and we should be ready to go. Alright, well, this is Stratus of War Savage, signing off. Hello, and this is Editing Scottish. And there's a couple interesting things about the battle that I didn't mention about. The Battlefront Royal happened in May of 1862 during the Jackson's Valley Campaign. But this is the only time in American history where the same regiment number in the same state fought against each other. The volunteers to the left of the Zouaves represented the 1st Maryland Confederates, and the Union skirmishers and infantry on the right side of the map represented the Union 1st Maryland. And this is the only time where they actually, the same number, like I said, in the same state fought against each other. Um, another interesting thing is that that the Union didn't even know this attack was going to come. So when this attack did come, Nathan Banks had to fall back to Winchester, which is where you get the first battle Winchester. Which I might do a map on that or a battle for a scenario. Um, using the Winchester map. When I am done making most of the Shenandoah Valley maps, I'm going to start combining them to make a Shenandoah Valley campaign map, which is going to be pretty big. Probably going to take me a while to do. But it's going to have all the maps combined. Um, anything else? Can't really think of anything else. But yeah, this ba this battle was very interesting and historically and in the game, it came out historically the same. Uh, same thing happened as historically. Um, uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe, comment, and like down below. I like to hear comments and see comments. They're very helpful to the channel. Thank you. This is Jess Savage signing off.